Cool. You did all right. Oh, um, Adam, what, what's the time? Uh, it's 8.48 exactly. Ha Hayden, have you drawn a watch onto your wrist? Oh, um, well I left my watch at home, so it's right Hayden, twice a day, isn't it? <laughs> I've got places I need to be today on time. I can't rely on you just guessing. What are the chances that you're... <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Now, you may have already guessed it, but today we're going to be taking a look at solving maths problems using time. Today's video will focus on time duration problems, but before we go on to that, I want to share with you a little bit of insight into how the Kent test or the 11 plus actually works and the answers that you have to choose from when it comes to the maths paper. On the screen, there's a question, and this is a simple question. You won't get one like this in a real test, but it's gonna show you exactly what I mean. The question is 27 plus 19. Now, the thing about the Kent test being multiple choices, you know the right answer is in there somewhere from A to E. But look at these options. This is not going to force you to do any maths. There's only one sensible answer, and that is clearly D. Now the Kent test is not going to do this. It's not going to ask you 27 plus 19 and give the option to write down blue as an answer. Absolute nonsense. What they do though, is pick wrong answers that you're likely to end up at if you have a misconception and get something wrong. Again, let me show you exactly what I mean. Here's the same example, 27 plus 19, but this time more realistic options. If I did 27 plus 19, and I laid it out in the column method, and I did seven plus nine is 16, and two plus one is three, and I put 36, that's the wrong answer. I didn't exchange over my 10 at the bottom. But the Kent test knows that this is a mistake you might make. So look at option B, 36. They pick answers to try and guide you down the wrong path. Now every answer here that isn't 46 is a trick option. For example, look at E. How can you get eight using these numbers? Well, quite often, children will do the wrong operation. If you do 27, subtract 19, guess what answer you get? It's eight, and they will put that in there to try and trick you. It's your job to be aware of this, and this is especially the case when we look at time questions. So let's jump straight in to question one. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Hayden's definitely real watch shows the time of 8.48. The current time is 16 minutes past 10 in the morning. And the question is, how many minutes slow is Hayden's watch? Now I'm going to start this off by showing you a common misconception, a common error we see in these questions. And children will look at the difference. They wanna know what the time is in between. So they'll write down 16 minutes past 10. So they'll do this, 10.16. And they'll know they have to take off 848 to find the difference because they used to that in their maths lessons, finding the difference, subtraction. And they will treat it like column method. We can get an answer, but it won't work. Let me show you. Exchange over, we're gonna get 16. Uh, 16 take away eight is eight. Uh, zero take away four we can't do, so we're gonna do lots of exchanging here. My goodness, this is already complicated. We've got 10, we're gonna get 60, okay. Nine take away eight is one, and we've got nothing left there. So one hour, 68 minutes. That is not how we solve these questions. Let me show you a method where you get the right answer every single time. Let's use a timeline and this will work every single question you have to do. So Hayden's digital watch shows the time 8.48. Let's whack that at the front because that's the earliest time. And the current time is 16 minutes past 10. So we'll make that 10, 16. And quite simply, we have to do jumps to find the difference. How do you do this? Well, the first job is to just jump straight to the next hour. So the next hour here will be nine o'clock. Now, knowing that there are 60 minutes in an hour, I can use my number bonds to know 48 plus 12 is 60, so that's 12 minute jump. Then I'm going to jump to the closest hour to my final time. My final time is 10.16, so I'm going to jump up to 10 o'clock. Luckily for us, that's just one hour, so that's plus one hour in the middle. And then the last jump is always super easy because we go from o'clock, here 10 o'clock, to something past. So it's really simple to read off. That's a 16 minute jump. The final step, once you have all of the jumps, is quite simple. 
add them together. So we've got 12 minutes and 16 minutes, that's 28 minutes, and we've got one hour. But this is where the Kent test can trick you. The question says, how many minutes? So we have to do one last conversion. And looking back to what I told you earlier about the answers in the Kent test and the options to try and trick you, you can guarantee that one of the options here will be 128 minutes. But is that the answer? Absolutely not. We know one hour can be swapped for 60 minutes. So we have to do 60 plus 28. The real answer to this question is 88 minutes. Okay, so now we've got the technique, we can go a bit more quickly. Example number two. Below shows the start and end time for a film at the cinema. How long did the film last in minutes? Here's how not to solve. So looking at this, a child might think, okay, I'm gonna find the difference between the hour hands and the difference between the minute hands. And we can see here that the hour hand goes one hour, two hours. So, okay, two hours, yeah. And the minute hand, well, we're down here over here. So we go around five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Two hours and 25 minutes. But that would be wrong. You've got to be super careful, especially when you're working with an analog clock face. Remember, you have to start at the start time and go, uh, go around the clock clockwise. Otherwise, you're going to make a mistake. Guess what? We have to use a timeline. Ah, so just seeing that timeline makes me relax because I know I'm gonna get this right every single time. The only thing you will have to do if you're working with an analog clock is just convert it into digital. So you do have to know how to read time, something to practice if you find tricky. The start time here, I can see that is 10 minutes to seven. So that's the same as 6.50. And then the finish time, I can see that is 25 minutes past, this would be eight. So I'm going to put eight. 25. So now I've got 650 and I've got 825. I can do my jumps. Very quickly we jump to the next hour which would be 7. That's a 10 minute jump. Then we jump to the closest hour which again luckily for us is just a one hour jump to 8. So that's one hour. And then the final jump to 825. Really simple is 25 minutes. Just check the question. Yes it asks for it in minutes again. So I'm going to change this straight away to 60 minutes. 60 plus 25 is 85 plus 10 is 95 minutes. That is the duration of the film. Getting it right every time with the timeline. Example number three, the final one before you have a go yourself. Now this is how not to do it. If I don't use the timeline, I try and do it in my head. I've got an after school club finished at 17.04. It lasted for an hour and 43. When did the club begin? Well, if I'm doing it quickly without writing it down, I might take the hour off. So I'm at 16.04, that's good. And then I see 43 minutes and four minutes. I'm gonna find the difference, which would obviously be 39 minutes, right? So I can take off 39 and put it on and get 16.43 was when the club must have started. No, absolute mess. Don't try and do it in your head. You know what you've got to do. You've got to do a timeline. Oh, okay, again, nice breath because I know I'm gonna get this question right. The club finished at 17.04. This time, the question is slightly different because we're given the duration, we need to find the start time. Don't fret, we can use the same technique as before using jumps. Now, if it lasted for one hour 43, there are lots of different ways we could jump backwards, but I'm gonna show you the way that I prefer. I'm going to take off the hour straight away. And that's going to take us back to 16.04. So now I know I've taken an hour off, I've just got 43 left for the final jump. If I jump to the next hour, which I like to do to make it nice and round, 1600, that means that I've not only taken off the hour here, I've taken off four minutes there. Now, if I had 43 minutes to take off and I've already taken off four of them, that means with some quick mental arithmetic that you have 39 minutes left to take off. So if I've got 39 minutes left to take off from four o'clock, use your number bonds to 60 because we know an hour is 60 minutes. I know that in fact, this one must end with 21 minutes and it's going to be the hour before 1600, which is 1500. So the club started at 1521 or 321 in the afternoon. The timeline has helped us again. Now you know what this means. We've done three examples together. You know what not to do. And I'm hoping you're all getting ready with your pen or pencil drawing a timeline to solve this question on the screen. 
If you think you've got an answer, please let us know in the comment section down below and we'll let you know if you got it right or if you fell for one of our traps. Leave a comment down below if you found that timeline technique useful. And before you click off the video, just make sure, if you haven't already, you click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you're the first ones to see our weekly educational videos. We'll see you next time.